You was affiliated with BMF. I did play a major role, and they indicted me. I was the only woman on the first indictment. Oh, and y'all watched the show, and you La La is portraying my character. Okay, tell us about the nomination. I got nominated for NAACP Image Award. Tell us what you know, based on what, what's already out there. Ooh. They were, you know, these young guys that we didn't have much. Guys that wanted to be in the business to make money. So how they get to that money, sis? Through a connection that I brought to you. And okay. what I told him was, I'm going to make you rich. I showed him how to make his first million. I told him how to what to do with his first million. And then from that, he just took off. Did you have... introduce your ex to me? In them? He no. introduced me to them. Let's talk about this relationship. Was it all peaches and cream? A lot of abuse. What does that first moment of abuse look like? The first hit caught me off guard. He's not going to let you go home. You can't leave. He's very remorseful. Then once he did it, he's showing me love again. Like, I'm sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. He's like, oh, I love you so much, I would never do it again. This was the cycle, and I didn't know how to get out of it. Like, when I say the fights were just crazy, dabbing him, I'm blowing up his car, he's blowing up my car, because I don't have my nose broke, or black eyes. So, how did your relationship with him finally end? When he went to prison. You doing it. You're yeah. still a successful entrepreneur, mm -hmm. doing so many things, infiltrated Hollywood. Mm -hmm. You came home and took charge of yeah, your life, and charge. you turned the negative into, into positive. positive. I'm busy loving myself, putting me first. Now that I know I deserve more. I'm busy loving myself, putting me first. Made up my mind, I'm on my grind. My time to shine, you hit my line. I press decline, no time for that. I'm moving for what I'm right now. You're in my past, I've come too far. To turn back now, not going back. I see that everybody's sleeping on me. They really gotta see it to believe. Welcome to I Love Me More with Tara Wallace. And Dr. Jamila T. Davis. Y'all, this is the place where people share their stories of resilience for the purposes of strength, empowerment, and healing. This is the love seat. This is where people sit. They tell us what's going on with them, where they've been. And, and we really try to give them a space where they can share their stories. Perhaps they haven't had a space to share it before. And we want people to be able to look at that and heal from it. Um, it's not salacious. It's not for gossip. It's really for empowerment, strength, and healing. Because what we figured out along this journey is that when we come together, mm -hmm. we heal quicker, right? There might be some things that I know that Tara doesn't know and she shares with me, then it can help mm -hmm. me, and same vice versa. Like, there's some things some of these women can share that can help you guys. So it's all in the exchange. Because a lot of times... The messy stuff, the sticky stuff, the stuff that we're not so proud of, we don't really get a chance to share that, or we don't are told that we shouldn't share mm -hmm, it, right? Exactly. But it's in our sharing that we actually break free and get healed. And I found that happens so much with women. But we're not we're not given the space to be human, right? And then a safe space a safe space to share it so that we can heal. And not just are we doing it on the couch, um, we're also doing it in our community. That's a safe space for women to come and share. We're in the community. Yes. We're talking. We have live events in the in the in the community. Yeah, and experts yeah, in the community, in the ex right? So you got to come to the community and share there as well. And how you can join our community is simply by visiting mm -hmm. www.blackwomenslivesmatter.com and just. Click the button join mm -hmm. and it's absolutely free. It's a space where we link up. We actually come into the community. So you mm -hmm. get to interact with us live. It's so dope. It's just an experience that is just, oh, I'm so grateful for. Yeah, absolutely. But Jamila, I'm about to get you back for what you did to me the other day. Get me back. I'm about to get you back for what you Mwah. did to me the other day. <laughs> I got a series of lightning round questions oh, for you. Oh, that's what you mean. Okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, so, you ready to jump in? Let's get it. All right, love or marriage? Marriage, baby. But I, I need them both. But, baby, now <laughs> it's time for marriage. Yes. All right. <laughs> Texting or driving? Texting. Okay. Uh, invisibility or super strength? Super strength. Mm, virtue or sin? Mm. Virtue, honey. Virtue this, these days. It was sin, <laughs> sin them other days, but virtue now. So you asking for permission or are you begging for forgiveness? 
oh, I'm asking for permission. I'm going to ask. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to then ask. You know, they say, you know, you, 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 you ask for forgiveness later, you know, but yeah. I'm going to ask for permission. We're going to do it the right way. We've healed. Eight steps. <laughs> you hear it? And would you rather have sex with someone that you hate but it's amazing or someone that you love and it's terrible? That's always so tricky, right? <sighs> I'm going to have to go for number two because I'm healing, baby. Right? I'm healing. <laughs> All right, so I don't want no more toxicity because, baby, you know that, ooh, that good stuff, all that I don't, good I don't stuff. Want, alone, I don't want no ooh. toxic good stuff. That okay, good get stuff out of here with that. Stuck, I think. That good I'm mean, that's Jamila. Stuff. That's Jamila's answer. I'm going to leave that alone. Mm. Mm. Well, all right, come on, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, that was our lightning round. Uh, I, had, I had to get her back because, she, you know, she hit me out, uh, off the cuff with that the other day, and I wasn't ready, so I'm like... I wasn't ready either, but yeah. that's all right. So you got me. That, that's the purpose of the light, lightning round. We want to know. That was up and it stuck. So you already know what's next, right? Yeah, you <laughs> have it. coming. Guys, up next, it is our next guest you don't want to miss, okay? Should we say the Motor City is in the house? Definitely the Motor City is in the house. And this sister, she's been through so much, right? Mm-hmm. Um, her story has been, uh, she's, she's, she's now nominated for NAACP Insane. award through her story. Just amazing person who's been through so much, overcame, still overcoming, and she gonna teach us some stuff today, baby. This couch, whoo, is about to get lit up in here because we're gonna be talking about some things, and that's what it's all about, transformation. Stay tuned, mm-hmm. but before you go, you already know what it is, we gotta pay these bills, so let's go pay these bills and stay tuned, we'll be right back. This, this is, is I, I Love, love Me More. more. Breaking free from toxicity. What's up, y'all? It's Tara Wallace. And Dr. Jamila T. Davis and I have something so exciting to share. We're bringing I Love Me More, a live segment to one of the world's largest hair shows, World Natural Hair Health and Beauty Show. And you guys already know how I love health and beauty. So come and hang out with us April 26th through the 28th. It's going to be a live segment. And come in and be a part of our healing community. Not only are we going to be on stage, we're going to be in the audience. We're going to be shopping. We're going to have a booth. We're going to be there to hang out with y'all. We cannot wait. ATL, here we go. All right, y'all. So you know I'm super excited because I got my sister on the show today. So without further ado, let's give it up for Tonessa Wells. I feel, I feel like this is the woman of the hour. Oh, baby. Yeah, yeah, on the, the couch. couch. On, a st- on, on the, the love spot, seat. Huh? Yes. The on queen, the, the extraordinaire, baby. There's so much going on with you right now. Thank yes. you for taking the time. Thank you guys for and, having and, me. This is special. Yes. Yeah, so Pretty. if y'all don't know, our sister is out here doing big things, right? You want to just, let's go forward before okay. we go backwards. Just tell us about the nomination and how you feeling and that whole thing. Oh, I got nominated for, well, what do you say? I'm a nominee. Okay. For um, NAACP Image Award. Ooh. And my gosh, you know how when you see the stars and they be asking them how they feel. I never thought, I'm like, is that real? Mm-hmm. Do they already know? But you really don't know. Mm-hmm. They call me like seven o'clock in the morning. And I looked at, I'm like, you know, PR guy, why is he calling me this early? Because I kind of forgot about the whole deal because they don't keep you up on it. Mm -hmm. And when he said, you got nominated, I'm like, what? Like, what? Dang. What? And it's like that feeling. It was just, I mean, when I tell you it was surreal, it was like I just laid there for a minute and I cried. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't believe it. Like, my story, you know? What people believe in, I didn't see it, you know. I'm just telling my story. I'm just telling my truth. I'm just talking about my life. But when other people see my journey, they felt that message that I was trying to convey. And for them to say that I was a nominee in it amongst all these amazing actors and these movies it was it was just it was so as amazing yes Yes. and for those out there that's inspiring to us because it lets us know pain and purpose you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. you know you can be you know you could be you could achieve Mm -hmm. things you can receive awards and commendations Mm -hmm. after all the storm so you represent the rainbow right now so you you. want to love couch for a reason so dope and And that our stories are important yeah. You know, they do matter. Mm-hmm. They, they do, do matter, matter, right? It took me a long time to start talking about my story. You know, it was just like, 
I was going through a lot, and I didn't want to talk about it, you know. And I was like, one day I was like, you know what? I just had a conversation with my younger son. He said, you should tell it. You should do your story. Baby, you was affiliated with, I guess, the number one. It's not even, you can't even say it two, three, four. The number mm-hmm. one, right, uh, organization, you know, mm-hmm. in our time, right, like for the BMF thing. And so yeah. I guess so many people will want to claim that. And it's so funny that somebody like you would be like, you know, hold up, you know, because yeah. I guess you see both sides of it, right? Yeah, I see both sides. It was, you know, you you have a lot of highs and lows, you know, and um, a lot of people don't see that fall of what can happen. Okay. You know, they are ignorant into the what can happen with the law. We all ignorant, uh, not all, but uh, most of us are ignorant to the law. So we out there just having fun, not thinking about the consequences, just living our lives just out there, you know, not – understanding, you know, the people that we put in danger, ourselves, our families, our communities. And when that uh, fall comes, it's like, ooh, you know, it hits uh-huh. hard. But the highs were like the highs. It's like you adrenaline, you know, you're feeling powerful, you're feeling strong, you're feeling like leaders. Everybody looking at me, you know, look at me. I'm here, I'm walking through the room. And people love that for some reason, people. I mean, I guess we all love it. I mean, mm-hmm. you know. You get uh, addicted to it. You get addicted to that that high. You know, wow. the money, the power, the feeling, you know, people looking at you and calling your name or the rooms and everything you're walking in. But when you fall, baby, it's something different. Yo, it's so crazy because I guess we going forward if we could go back. Yeah. We could dance a little bit with yeah. this one. Mm-hmm. But being a part of a notorious drug organization like BMF, right? Mm-hmm. So, um you and myself are both, both are formerly incarcerated women, yes. right? So I never met you until last year, but right. I heard of you mm-hmm. because your story preceded itself. And then you kind of educated me a little bit about the whole BMF thing with women. So can mm-hmm. we talk about that? Because we know it's it's Meech and, um, and Terry, Terry, which who, who is the one the that one you, I was dating. you dated, right? Mm-hmm. So the two brothers, we know about that. But when it comes to women in the organization, I've met a couple of women that claim to be the woman of the organization, but then you kind of schooled me about the indictments and the women. So I just want you to set the record straight on that and you and your role, and then we can go back and go, you know, go from there. Well, when I look at it, like, it was just me with all the guys. And, you know, I came in before, even before BMF, I had already been in the streets as a young girl. Mm -hmm. So... It was just like me and them, you know, Mm -hmm. the guys Mm -hmm. and me. You know, I was always mobbing with them because I came into it with them. Mm -hmm. You know, so when a lot of women say they were a part of it, I don't remember that. I know everybody had their girlfriends around or their side chicks or whatever they had, Mm -hmm. you know, their pieces around. But when it was me handling in our organization the money and watching and doing certain things, it was me. We had, you know, a couple of friends that got indicted later on. Mm -hmm. But when with the first indictment, I did play a major role, and they indicted me. I was on the first indictment, the only woman on the first indictment. Okay, so that was what it was, the only woman on On the the first first indictment. indictment. Mm -hmm. And it's so crazy because, not that we're glorifying crime here, because trust me, we're going to heal and we're going to learn, but it's so crazy that a woman, right, Mm -hmm. you actually was beneficial to the organization. You helped the organization to gain the name and the esteem that it's known as today, would you say? And would you? I mean, I want, you, <laughs> men get offended when you say that. But, like, I came into it. I had already, you know, I was already in the game before I even met T.M.H. Mm-hmm. I had been in the game. I'm nine years older than T. Mm-hmm. And me, so I had already been in the game. I kind of, as a young girl, grew up in, into the game. So when... We came together. I gave them a part of what I already had. Like, I introduced them to my connect. So that sounds to me like we're partners. So yeah. Like, take it off the drug business. Yeah, right? we're partners. Get it off drug business, and let's go into real business. And real business, mm-hmm. me and Tara, we're partners. We yeah. came together on this thing, yeah. right? She got some, I got some. We say, okay, so if you coming together on something, and Just then y'all like building business. something, we're right? Building something. So then you... you, you you yeah. have a big role in it. Yeah. Not a, a big small role. one. Big role. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> because when I first met T, he was just my friend. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm watching, he's kind of under me and my ex-husband. So mm-hmm. 
You know, I'm like, okay, then Baby, I thought- if y'all don't know the story, this gets <laughs> juicy, right? So she's talking about her ex-husband. So you was with your ex, and just explain that for people that don't watch the show. Mm-hmm. Now, if y'all watch the show and you've heard about BMF, mm-hmm. um, is it Lala that represents? Lala is portraying my character. Okay, so Lala portrays her character on the show. Unofficially, but yes. Unofficially, okay. So let's get into it. So tell us a little bit about you. And we're going to go back and try to get the understanding. How the hell do you you become, Mm -hmm. you know, pretty much it's a drug lord. Yeah. Because that's really the title. You know, how do you become, it's not even a queen pin. It's a drug lord because you're over all this, like how in the world. So we'll go back to that. But just explain to us the story. What happened was I was dating, um, I was married, I was dating my boyfriend, and we got married. He was a kingpin, and I wanted to be a part of that world. I, I mean, I just dove right in. I wanted to do what he was doing. I, it excited me. You know, it was like a young girl watching somebody. They moving all this, they doing all this, moving all this way. They dressing fancy people, you know, looking at them, you know, they the man. I wanted to be that that woman on his arm, but I wanted to be involved. It excited me. Like, you know how when you used to watch, I can say like movies like Bonnie and Clyde mm-hmm. or something mm-hmm. like that. In my head, I wanted to be that. I wanted to be that power girl next to that powerful man, mm-hmm. but more so in it. I always thought that I could do it better than almost he, he could do it. You know what I'm saying? I grew up with three brothers, and I always was ruling the house. You know, I was always uh, a leader in something, mm-hmm. so I wanted to take over. I wanted I to be I could totally that. relate, and Tara might be looking, because, you know, she sometimes, <laughs> when I bring my prison <laughs> sisters on, uh-huh. Tara be looking like, baby. <laughs> but I was that same girl. Yeah. And it, for me, it was my boyfriend dumped me. He was getting money, and then I mm-hmm. started messing with another dude, and they was getting me. And then I'm like, yo, I always had an entrepreneur spirit. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, you could do this like this. You could, you could do, do that it. like that. Yo, if you got the connect, you could re-up and yeah. come back and do it like this. So I also found myself in the game. Yeah. Now, not like you now, sis. Like, mm-hmm. now, now I'm going, <laughs> you know, I did some things, but I ain't do what you did now. But I can relate right. yeah. from that position of wanting to be that because you see them with that and you see them getting that money and you like if they can get it I can, I get, can it get it right mm-hmm. and I took him my ex-husband was from the east side and I was from the west side and I'm like they ain't got this on the west side let me take this on the west side and it was like okay it was just like a partnership but I always thought that I could push him to do better and get more you know like you said that mm-hmm. entrepreneur skills so like did you have, introduce your ex to to me and them or he, they in, already he them? introduced me to them okay because we were like you said a partner mm-hmm. we were together like if any other business mm-hmm. and so everybody that he brought in he wanted to run by me to make sure mm-hmm. you know that they were cool they were mm-hmm. gonna work out and told me what their role was going to be. And so when he brought them around, that's what it was. I met them. They were too young. At the time, they were young, just young kids to me. Mm -hmm. That time, I'm like, okay. And And so how does it get romantic? It didn't get romantic until after my ex-husband, he got caught up. Okay. Because I told him, don't do something. And he did it anyway. Mm. And so he got caught up. So he, afterwards, I had to be my own one. Now I'm by myself. I'm not, I'm by, I don't have a partner anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm in the streets. I'm handling it. I met a connect on my own. Mm-hmm. And then I'm just, you know, running the streets by myself. Which is and so dangerous. So, Which is so dangerous. But for, I, for some reason, I never feared. Mm. You know, I don't know if that's a young being a mm-hmm. young woman and just don't have a fear of anything. I didn't have a fear of nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, I always thought I can handle anything that came my way. I I, re, I demanded my respect. Okay. People used to think that I was like, she's mean, she's cruel, she's strewed, you know. But really, I didn't feel it like that. I'm just running a business. I ran a business like it was any other business. You mm-hmm. know, you had to run it that way if you wanted to make the money, you wanted to be safe. You know, you had to make sure you were safe. Everybody around you was safe. So that's how I had. And being a woman, mm-hmm. you had to, you know, you know, demand your. So what level of the business was, um, you know, meeting his brother on when they met you and got you? Was they 
No. Was it the BMF thing? No. What was when it? we when they first when I first met them, they were just really young guys. I don't, you know, I don't watch the BMF mm-hmm. show, so but a lot of people tell me, so I don't remember the part that you know, like they said, um, well, it's not true, right? A true story. So I don't remember that part of them when oh, the I the way that they told them. the way they're telling them. When tell I, us the dentist. That's why you want to talk. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, tell the way I, us, uh-huh. you know, tell us. You know, based on what what's already out there, right? Right. right. What what based on those stories and what you know to be true? Well, I know the truth. They were, you know, these young guys that really didn't have much. You know, they were nice guys. You know, young guys that wanted to be in the business to make money. But when I met them, they didn't have you know the money that they show on the show, mm-hmm. um, and so. So how they get to that money, sis? Let's talk about that. Um. Through a connection that I brought Terry to, mm. you know, and like I told so him, I really, really Terry to the connect. Yeah, to my connect. And okay. what I told him was, I told him, I said, I'm gonna make you rich, Ooh. just like that. And, and I said, I'm gonna make you rich. And I said, when I make you rich, don't let this go to your head. I'm gonna show you how to work this money. Mm. So I showed him how to make his first million. I told him how to what to do with his first million. And then from that, he just took off. Wow. Mm. So you take this younger man, younger man who's nine years younger than you. That he was just my friend. He always watched my back. He was somebody, because I was a broken woman. Mm-hmm. You know, mentally something had to be broken inside of me to even want to take those chances in the street. Right. That's right. You know what right. I mean? Right. And, and we're going to go back and talk about yeah. that, so I'm glad you said that. So, you, baby, this is a juicy <laughs> one. We got to follow all the details yeah. now. But I want to get to the part mm-hmm. because yeah. I feel like even though your movie's out there and people see and people know it's, it's, <clears throat> I want to just put the facts on the table mm-hmm. so those that's just tuning in they can get right to it. So now you had, and you said it wasn't romantic. So it wasn't, it wasn't it didn't start romantic, romantic at all. You it just wanted to see these, they was not kids per se, but these younger men succeed, mm-hmm. right? Well, when my ex husband went to prison, he told Terry, he said, I want you to watch her back. Okay. You know, not knowing where, where I was going with my life. Okay. He's just like, I'm leaving. I need somebody to make sure she's good. Mm-hmm. But then I took off on my own. Okay. And Tear was always around me. He was like my soundboard, my person that I would talk to all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was my trusted friend. Mm-hmm. So the romance came much later on. Not when he was like 18, 17 or 18. I think he was 25 when the romance So came you started in. messing with him. Well, he started business at about 18 or so. When he was with my ex-husband. Okay. And now when he's 25... You guys, because we still friends. After uh, you make them that first million, like hold up, right. you, you heard what my sis said. <laughs> right. I'm gonna make you rich, yeah. okay? And I don't know what I mean. Like I'm like like he, but but it's like, not like you're the type of woman if you're if you're running this kind of business. It's not like you're the type of woman that everybody could have access to. No. So that limits your access to people mm-hmm. who you can be around, the men you can meet, right? And so if this is the person around mm-hmm. who now becomes your confidant in a yeah, way. Yeah, and he was just like, why you never had no money? Like, what's going on with you? Because I've always been around, I always had money. Mm-hmm. I always had a, a way to make money. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what that hustle was. When I did my hustles, I was always good at it, you know? And I couldn't understand, like, why you never had no money? Like, you know, I'm ha- I got money. You know, I got money in the basement. I got money everywhere. And my friend, mm-hmm. this is my friend, I want my friend to have money too. Wow! So that's how that started. Okay, you know. So little then, did you know, your friend that you wanted to have money too ends up now going down in history for having one of the most notorious empires mm-hmm. now, drug empires that we've seen right. in our time. Right. Wow. Mm-hmm. So when he started taking off, we start everything started getting big. He started making a lot of money. He said, "Now you don't have to do this. Now I got you." Mm-hmm. Wow. So that's how that. So happened. now, how did the romantic piece get in? I don't know. I'm just being around a person all the time. Right. You know, you being around mm-hmm. this person, you trusting them. Then you, you know, you don't groom them. Like, oh, damn, you looking okay. Mm-hmm. You know, you start mm-hmm. looking at them. You and know? how was that for you as a older woman messing with this younger guy? Like, with the, or was it okay? Or you didn't look at it like? At first, I didn't. I mean, at first, it was like, no, nah, you're too young. Okay. For me. But as he started growing on me and maturing on me, I watched him mature. I've mm-hmm. seen him become this man. And it, I started being attracted to him. Wow. And he was somebody that I trust. I felt safe around, you know. Other, I couldn't bring to, I couldn't bring other people into my life because of what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And I always knew to be safe. Yeah, like not being able to be around so much. Yeah. Because 
you to connect you to uh, Julie right. the kid. And I just couldn't run out there. I was very, very private. A mm-hmm. lot of people didn't know what I was doing unless you really, really knew me. Okay. So I wasn't out there like wow. that. I had my few friends that, you know, that I trusted in him. And that's how it came about. So now, sis, it mm-hmm. happens, it happens, right? <laughs> it happens, right? Your friend, who's your confidant, ends up becoming your lover. Yeah. What do y'all say after that? What do you do? You, what do you think? Like, well, let's get back to my ex husband. How will the world view us? How will we think? Like, did any of these things cross your minds at the time? It crossed my mind, but I, it was I had already knew that once my husband came, no matter who I was going to be with, if it wasn't going to be Terry, whoever it was, I wasn't going to be back with my husband Mm. because I was in a a very abusive relationship with him. Mm. So I had already planned in my head, I'm going to make sure he's good through this whole prison thing. I'm going to take care of him. I had that type of, you know, unrealistic loyalty, you know? Like, I'm going to make sure he's good. When he come home, I'm going to have him, he's going to have some money, He's going to have a place to stay, but I knew I wasn't going to be with him. So if Terry had nothing to do with it, no matter who I would have been with, I wasn't going to be with him. Good place. So now let's go back. (laughs) Rewind. Okay, so let's go back because this is good. You set the stage for us. We understand who you are, what you did, your contribution to the organization. Mm -hmm. Now let's get to how in the hell did you get there? I always find it so interesting, like women who, you know, it, it, you know, from what you see on TV, and we know that's not a real place necessarily, mm-hmm. but you only see men in these positions. So when you when you get into the thickness or the truth of these stories, and you see that there are women there, mm-hmm. it, it it becomes for me the audacity, the balls, the courage to be in such a dangerous, not mm-hmm. just male dominated field, but a dangerous male dominated field, and be a woman, and then thrive, mm-hmm. and now. To be able in this world and day and age to now tell your story in in a specific way. Mm-hmm. So I guess the question for our audience would be like, yo, was your your parents hustlers? Mm-hmm. Like, was you no. around this all your life? <laughs> like, did you was you born and you knew, mm-hmm. yo, I'm mm-hmm. gonna do this? Or like, what happened? It was it's the weirdest thing. I had three brothers, then it's me. Then I grew up with my mom, who was my best friend, you know, growing up. And then I had I was raised with my stepdad, which they were hard workers. Mm-hmm. My brothers were hard workers. I was the only one that was attracted to the streets. Okay. My they my brothers would talk about it to this day, like, why was you so different? Why was you, you know, you was more street than us and half the people around us. And I don't know where it came from. Mm-hmm. I really don't. What, why was my attraction to the streets more so than them? Because I was raised in a middle-class home. It wasn't like we struggled. i never seen the lights out. i never, you know, went hungry. We grew up with two cars. My mom had a car. My dad had a car. Mm-hmm. You know, all of that. But what was going on in my head that I wanted to be out in the streets, danger, getting away with stuff was my high. Like, ooh, I got away with that. No matter what it was. No, you know, we just got away. So yeah. that's our similarities again. Yeah. So a lot of people think when they see me or see my story, mm-hmm. they think I come from, you know, this other life, and I don't. Yeah. I came from two hardworking parents mm-hmm. who got to it that was law-abiding mm-hmm. citizens that I had no reason, but I was attracted to, yeah. to the other side, mm-hmm. and I got that other side and then it just was like I went crazy yeah. so I could relate to that too yeah one day my mom sit me Good down girls and she like said the bad, bad boys, boys. <laughs> she said where did you come from and I thought like what did she mean where I come from I came from you mm-hmm. <laughs> like, but I was so different from my whole household like everything that I wanted to do always growing up they used to call me goat when I was little now we know what goat means but I don't think they contributed to that name back then. But I was thinking, like, why do you used to call me goat? So now I realize I was the goat. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what introduced you, you uh, to the hustler lifestyle? My ex-husband. And how old were you when you met him? 19. Okay. Wow. Mm-hmm. So the most impressionable age, mm-hmm. getting out into the world. Yeah. You know. It was like I walked in, like I always say in the movie, in my interviews. It was like when I seen him, I walked into this party. They This party was just like. It had to be the hottest party that I have ever seen other than on television. I went in there. I came through that spin, that, uh, you know, the revolving okay. door, and I was a new woman. Wow. Oh, wow. So what was it? What did he it, say? What did he do? It, it wasn't even about what he said. Looking at him, he looked it so fly. My ex-husband was a fly man. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but the people that he was hanging with, he was a young man. Um, other than, he was young, but the people he was hanging with were older, and they were older hustlers, and they looked fabulous to me. The women looked fabulous to me. It was like, oh, this is what you always wanted to be. This is where you always wanted to be. This is where you belong. This so is you, where I belong. I, I felt so like I fit up. in. Yeah, mm -hmm. I felt like I fit in. You know, this is, I didn't want to be boring over there, not, you know, in the neighborhood no more. I wanted to be over there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> over there looked good to me. So now you get over there, and what happens? Give us the glimpse of how you do in, and now what? He would just right away, um, he start giving me things, mm -hmm. you know, right away. The jewelry, the coat. My mom said, when he gave you that first coat, that first coat, I knew it was over. Mm -hmm. And it was. It was like, I want these things. You know, the cars, I'm driving his cars, I'm doing... The things I'm and, and women we like to we like to drive a guy's car because yeah. it's like it's like I'm marking our You're territory. Right. We, uh, like, yeah, like when a man <laughs> trusts you with his car, car. Yeah, it means you know this you, is serious. This is serious. So you become the it girl. I become the it girl. And get and I'm from the west side. Mm -hmm. He from the east side. So when I come back on the west side, I'm looking fly. I'm getting the attention, mm -hmm. you know. And it and was just being addicted to that. I was addicted to it. That was you know. Too. Because so he then, wanted it fast. My mother, I think I, I grew up spoiled and probably entitled. Mm -hmm. And But then, okay, I don't even got to ask you. I don't even got to do this. I mm -hmm. can get this fast now. And when I'm seeing the money he making, I'm like, oh, I can do that. I can do that better. He was showing me how to cut the rock, and I was just doing it better. He would just have me just do it like, you, okay, you can do this. You know, I, got, I trust you. You got that? I got this. I could do it, you know. Better than so kind of like <laughs> in your household being the only girl, kind of the center of attention, mm -hmm. you know, and then now being mm -hmm. this woman in this household and you're with your boyfriend now being the center of attention mm -hmm. and he's able to upkeep that yeah. in a different way. It's like that song, you know, not with the reverse, that he upgraded me. <laughs> like, he upgraded baby, you. Upgraded. But did he really? So let's I was get it. I was about to say, when you, yeah. Wait, so, I, I was you know what, I really that. did, because I said, I was working. I was mm -hmm. working just as hard as you, yeah. but you know, my head, I'm like, you fool. And <laughs> now you bought into something that now we both know is an illusion. Mm -hmm. It's a lie. Right? It, it comes was. with all the glitz and the stuff, but now mm -hmm. what really what really happened. So mm -hmm. let's talk about this relationship. Was it all peaches and cream or, or, or what no. ended up coming out of it? A lot of abuse. Mm -hmm. So I, I was like, what does that first moment of abuse look like? You, you're happy. You have your fur coat, you're driving the car, you know, just, mm -hmm. just, you know, as a 19 year old girl, like, I don't, you know, like the first hit, like it was like, it caught me off guard, mm -hmm. but you know, right after he's not going to let you go home. You can't leave. He's very remorseful. Um, at first, I thought, like, okay, maybe, you know, I, back then, mm -hmm. I never heard of it. I didn't see it. I didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. I'm young, you know, like, why is he doing this? But then once he did it, he's sh showing me love again, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I'm sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Now he's back loving me. He's extra with the things. Now I'm not, you know, he's right under me. He's crying. He's like, oh, I love you so much, I would never do it again. Mm -hmm. And it just became a, a habit. This was the cycle that I started, I was in, and I didn't know how to get out at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, I was young. I didn't know how to That's get out. That's a real place. And so many other people have dealt with some form of abuse like that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When somebody hits you and hurts you, but then they start to show you love, so you become confused. You, you're very right? confused. Mm -hmm. And that confusion often allows you to stay longer. Stay, than, yeah, than mm -hmm. you should, you know, because I was very confused the first time. And then, like you say, you start showing more and more love, the more, you know. But then it would just mean, like, he's contr he started controlling me more, you know. Um, and I didn't understand it. Like I said, I was very young. I didn't see my So parents. what was the controlling like? The, uh, like, um, I was always with him. Mm -hmm. Always, uh, you know, nobody could really look at me, you know, not like that. He, he could do things to me. But he was very protective of me on the outside. You know, like nobody could say, you know, anything, there, nothing disrespectful. Mm -hmm. He was that type of man. He's very con controlling me. Did he keep you isolated? <sighs> or did he let you just be your own person? No, he didn't let me be my own person. It was always a set of you knew that because of who he was, that you had to be that type of woman around him. Mm. 
Mm. No, so, so how did he begin to entrust you with all of these, I guess, with this control, entrust you now running the business? It was, it? Uh, to me, it's weird. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he trusted me. Like, I was like, everything. To, I knew everything, you know, besides, you know, when a man cheat. But I knew everything. He wanted me to know everything. Okay. You know, he didn't trust anybody on the streets you know like any of the guys that was around them they couldn't owe him anything they couldn't do anything you know he made sure that I knew everything mm-hmm. like if something happened to him like he would always sing that song back then just in case just in case I don't make it home tonight mm-hmm. he would say just in case you know okay. when the song came that was his favorite song mm-hmm. he let you know because he knew that he could trust me I basically took care of that man even though he was abusive, he still knew that I took care of him. I nurtured him. I made sure he was good. So now this is the epitome of toxicity, right? Very much so. so. we here on the, on the right. we about to talk about the toxic things, bro. These are the signs. You meet somebody. They woe you. They show you the side of life that mm-hmm. really isn't it. Now, once they get you hooked in, right? Hooked. Now they, 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 they beating on you. Mm-hmm. They use a physical force as another means of fear mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. control you, to make you stay. But at the same time, they make you fear them. They also make you love them more because they they showing you so much passion and so much attention. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, well, maybe. And now you're getting confused and you're staying longer in the situation when you really should be out. And Mm -hmm. now you got the gifts, the money and all those things, which confuse things more. Mm -hmm. And then it's almost like he grooms you Mm -hmm. because he trusts you. Because you went through the and system. Yeah, and um, I felt like I had to take care of him. I mean, he grew up in such a, a bad household. And yeah. in a way, I kind of like felt like sorry, sorry for, him. for him. You know, like. So you was, made an excuse. I always made an excuse. For him, for, him. for his actions. Mm-hmm. How many of y'all can say y'all did that? Because I know I've done that and I've stayed stuck mm-hmm. in places too, making excuses for someone who they knew what they was doing. Right. Yeah. Because I believe he was pre. You know, you're, you're pre-calculated. Right. It's crazy. It's crazy. We sit there, and just like with anything, you know, that he was cheating and all that. We always make an excuse or we so, I don't know what it is. We just so love this person. We feel, feel like we have to take care of them, too. They, in my head, I guess he couldn't do any better without me. You wow. know, like. Mm-hmm. If, if I, now if that I, made you feel a false sense of worth. Of worth, yeah. Right? Through all mm-hmm. of this toxicity. So those are some of the signs we should look for. Mm-hmm. And now what is the crazy moment in the violence where you're like, oh, shoot, mm-hmm. this is crazy. It was getting crazier. Yeah, crazy. So explain that. Tell us what that looked like. Um, the, When the, the more the money came, the more, you know, the drugs was involved. And it was just crazy. Like, when I say the fights were just crazy, he would just come in and it just, no matter, you know, it could be anything. You just, it was just so off guard. It was no real reason, you know. Um, the dinner wasn't right or something. Like, wow. something crazy. And it would just. And he would beat you. Yeah. And yeah. did he beat I mean, you bad? Was it light? Did you have black eye? Like, what was oh, the extent of that? That's honey. Wow. I don't have my nose broke, broken eye, you know, wow. black eyes. Bitches, broken up. It was just crazy. The stuff, when I look back at it, I'd be like, what? why were you so insane and stayed? Did your family notice? Um, when, he, when he would do things like that, he would. that's when you don't see your family. That's when you isolated. Mm, you know? But he doesn't was, want nobody to know. Yeah. And him and my brothers had gotten to it a few times until it was like, oh, she's just going to go back. You know, She's just going to go back anyway. So everybody would just give up, and they would think, like, okay, when they didn't hear from me, they probably knew. But when I come back around, I'm okay. I'm fine. Mm. We're, we're in a good place. We look like this happy family, you know, because it was me and him and the kids. And you know how most men do once they, they know when they do something. So you, you have kids for him at this point? So I have what, what, when did the children start? So you're running this business. you uh taking this abuse, and then you start having children. I mean, children. I would – like I'm saying, it would be back and forth. I would leave sometimes, okay. but no matter where I would go, this man would find me. Mm-hmm. He would find me. Like It's like I had a, a tether on me or a chip in my body mm-hmm. or something mm-hmm. because he was so known in the city that he could just um, get anybody to tell him anything. Mm-hmm. 
you know, they would, like, it was like, okay, I can't tell this person where I'm at. I can't hang out with this person because he would find me in some way. He would always draw me back in. Like I said, just very, you know, like mental, like very a broken young woman and not really realizing where this brokenness came from. But I realized I was broken as a young girl before I even met him. Somewhere I was already broken. Even though I looked at my household as normal, I thought it was normal, but somewhere deep down as a little girl, I was broken to even want to be in that lifestyle, be with this type of person, feel like what he's doing to me, I'm, I'm loved. You know, I, I thought I was getting loved. I thought I had great parents, but maybe something was missing. Have you been able to identify that, that one thing? I think it was just not having a biological father. And I always thought I was different. I, my, I grew up with my brothers. They were um, light-skinned with green eyes and nice hair. And here, me, I'm thinking, I'm not even dark, but I grew up thinking I was a dark girl with coarse, nappy hair. That's mm -hmm. how I felt. I didn't feel attractive. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's where it came from, you know, wanting that, wanting, li wanting to be like they were, you okay. know. Even though they didn't treat me different, mm -hmm. I felt different, okay. you know. That's a real place. Mm -hmm. So self-esteem from a young age, and that's yeah. why it's so important for us to lift our I little girls, girls up, up and tell them how beautiful they yeah. are, how dope they are, so that mm -hmm. they know and really right. live in the fullness right. of that so they're not vulnerable to mm -hmm. predators. Yeah. It's a real place. And, and my parents, my mother thought maybe just shopping, buying me things, she was showing me love. Mm -hmm. But really, I don't remember those great hugs and I love you and you're a beautiful little girl. Oh. You're smart. You're you know, you're bright, you're pretty. My mother was adopted, so once I got older, we had that conversation, and she said, I didn't, I really didn't know how to love. She said, I mm. knew I loved you with my whole life. Wow. But I didn't know how to show love. That's a real thing. Mm. And as parents, That's oftentimes, really we don't have a manual. Yeah. So we give what we got, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes mm -hmm. that's just not good enough. But this man who's beating on you, I always tell you know, him. You know, now he's telling you how right. much he loves you, right? Mm -hmm. Now he's buying you the fur coat. Mm -hmm. Now he's doing all the things. Of course, mm -hmm. you're going to be so confused and stuff because you're receiving a love like you never really got before. But right. this thing ain't really love because it's, it's toxic, toxic. Mm -hmm. crazy. So mm -hmm. how did your relationship with him finally end? When he went to prison. Wow. Yeah, and it was just, it, it was getting bad, too, you know. I'm stabbing him, I'm blowing up his car, he blowing up my car. Because that's what you find, like, in these toxic relationships, you become toxic. Uh, yeah, I become think toxic. I can stay longer because now I'm I'm, I'm um, doing something yeah. back. I'm hitting back. Yeah. I'm not just taking I'm this. not just taking but it, it. But it's yeah. all That's abuse. a real thing, too. And, and, yeah. and I, I, I've, t I've had conversations with women where their justification is the fact that they fought back mm -hmm. or that they didn't lie down or even my own story mm -hmm. where I feel like, well, I didn't just take that. Like I did my own things and people, but it's like, no, I shouldn't have to entertain you shouldn't even have toxicity to be living after like being that. abused. Now you're becoming yeah. someone who you're not. Who you're not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. now you're becoming a was. monster, you know, because the person is a monster, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah. too much. Right. It's toxicity. And it's, it's just something mm -hmm. that you have to break free from. But God loved you so much. Oh, he loved you. That me. he took him oh. away. So what you couldn't do in your own strength to happen, and that often happens to our sisters, mm -hmm. right? Something happens, and now you no longer, oh, my God, I'm done. But you don't even understand that when you mm -hmm. can't help yourself, the universe is actually yeah. working for you. But still, I was still broken. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So because if I wasn't a broken woman, now that I look back at my second relationship mm -hmm. with Terry and from BMF Southwest T, that I was a broken woman, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, to even get in that relationship. Mm -hmm. And explain that. What I'm saying, I was just broken. I wasn't healed. I wasn't healthy. Mm -hmm. You remember, I'm coming from a broken place. Another I'm toxic coming, relationship. Yeah. So do you feel like you brought some of your toxicity into that new relationship? I think he, he watched and knew that I was broken, mm -hmm. and he preyed on that to me. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. This was a young man. Yeah, because, but, I mean, even though I, when I look back at it now, you know, I think he he needed something from me, which was that, that money and that power. I made him look mm -hmm. the power. I'm with this woman now. I'm becoming powerful, but I really don't feel like it was, like, real love, you mm. know. I'm, I'm just somebody mm. broken 
that this is my friend. I'm not healthy. If I was a healthy woman like I am today, Mm -hmm. because I think, and this is what a lot of women, when you come out of situations, any relationship, I don't care, healthy, unhealthy, whatever, I think you need to sit back, get yourself together, wonder Think about why that relationship didn't work out. Mm-hmm. What it was? What was it about me that I went through that? What, what happened Baby, in that last? Talking week? about the eight <laughs> steps, sugar. Uh-huh. Doing processing, right. having that time out uh, to really, yeah. really, really analyze yourself and mm-hmm. heal before you get into something that's crazy and, and right. toxic. Because this is a young man that never. I was always that person that. I was that go-getter. Like, even with my husband, we going to have things. We going to have this house. We going to have this cars. We going to have this credit. We going to have this money. We going to have this businesses. This is what we going to do. And I had those things. So when you go to a young guy that don't even have those things, that don't even have that mindset, where was I thinking? I'm trying to groom somebody. I'm an older, m- much uh, more that's mature what was, that's woman. That's what I'm saying. So it felt safe, though. It, felt, you know, it just when felt you, safe. Especially yeah. when you feel like um, – I feel like as a woman, sometimes if you are in power now, mm-hmm. you're not being abused, you're grooming this this person who now looks up to you and reveres you because right. you have all these things that he now wants and he mm-hmm. needs to learn. Mm-hmm. And so now it feels safe to groom it's him. He's false yeah. self-esteem. It's false. Yeah. So no, it's none, not of, none of it's real. I'm just it's saying not real. you feel safe in that moment. Mm-hmm. As this broken person, you feel right. safe in what you're doing. Well, what but, she's explaining mm-hmm. is that and I know because, again, I identify so much because I had low self-esteem, didn't mm-hmm. feel pretty enough, didn't feel good enough. Mm-hmm. And those things allowed me to um, get into really toxic relationships, same situation. And then I became the fixer yeah. mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. everyone's life. Fixing everybody right? for because not fixing I you. felt like that gave me my self-worth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? right? So I see the pattern now. Like, and mm-hmm. That's why I said this couch is so important. Yeah. And it's not just for the person sitting in it. It's for us. Because mm-hmm. now you become the fixer. So now you feel like, okay, boom, I could give him something. Like you told him. I'm going to make you rich. I'm a, I've seen myself, you know, doing some of those same things to people mm-hmm. and did it because mm-hmm. I had that power. Mm-hmm. And it was like I got this false esteem and false adrenaline going through right. somebody else. Right. Because I'm not fixing myself. You're not mm-hmm. fixing yourself. You just, if I fix this part, yep. you, you're trying to back, I mean, you know, just put that back in, in the back of your mind. Like you're thinking like I'm fixing myself because I'm fixing you. But, no, I'm still damaged. Mm-hmm. I don't want to even talk about those things no more i want to let's move on let me help you let me fix you let me get you together and we can run this thing but i still got all that damage all that stuff inside and you know what's so crazy about that piece when you fix something that was supposed to really remain broken or whatever the situation Mm -hmm. is it begins to revert on you and resent you and resent me and Every that's, single and time. that's what happened when you give people things that mm-hmm. they didn't work hard for mm-hmm. when you you doing all of these juggling and playing mm-hmm. the matrix mm-hmm. these particular people and uh resenting you. you yeah and it becomes the worst, worst. relationship you could you ever, ever have yeah i know it because i lived it yeah and so once he started once he said you don't have to work anymore and he took over. Now he has the power of me because mm. now I'm dependent on him. So now what said, did that now? How did that change the dynamic it just, of the relationship? It, it just changed it. It was just horrible. And mm. but now I don't put my life inside. I don't move to California. We don't. I don't put my name on these houses. I don't do all these businesses, you know, and everything. Now I'm stuck. Wow. You know, I am literally stuck. Even though I'm trying to steal, like, well, what happened to? What happened to what all that? The, we were best friends. We were friends. What happened to that love? And then you you, you there, wake up one day and it's and it's just gone, gone. And that ah. person is treating you like because you know, now he now he's making that. you feel like you regular. He yeah. know you're I'm not regular, regular, but he's ma- trying to make me feel like because now he's trying so, to bring you back down again and down. break your esteem so that he could feel you know yeah. power. you know because yeah. if the truth is you really was the plug right. but nobody else can't know that so right. I'm gonna push you all the I'm way down, down so I can rise up. Yeah, crazy, crazy. So mm. no matter what, you know, all the jewels, the big house, the cars, and all that, the parties, and all that. I was still, my soul was aching inside. Mm. I was dark inside. I was hurting inside. Mm. That's a real place. Mm. Thank you for your transparency. Mm. So now let's get to the story. So now you're in California. Everything is happening. You see the BMF name blowing up in all the different branches and the states. And they balling and the celebrities. And everybody's calling and screaming. 
what are you thinking and what what happens next? You go, I was on a roller coaster ride. I was really, I never had um, been in a place mm -hmm. like that. Even though I was looking good, I was living two different lives. I always say, mm -hmm. I didn't really know who I was mm -hmm. because I'm pretending to be this and I'm pretending to be this person. You know, I'm in Hollywood. Now I got to act like the Hollywood life. I can't be. You know, the, the drug lady, my kids in these prestigious schools. So now I'm raising little, they got to pretend to raise them. We all lying, you know. Wow. And, you know, like. Living a you, life of pretend. Life of pretend. And you don't even realize that you putting this all on your children, you know. So it was very selfish of me to put my children through it because nobody else would have put their children through it. So know? what happened with your children as a result of this? Um, one of my sons went to prison and my two kids were, my two younger sons was left at home and it's like, nobody really cared. You know, I was the only woman that out of that group that went to prison and left their children at home. And that's why the, you know. Okay. So the indictment comes down mm -hmm. and as we know the story, there's informants and everybody's telling and it all goes to hell. The brothers begin to fight against each other. So they have their own internal war mm -hmm. and now you also get caught up so what did the day that they came in and got you look like or when did the what was the beginning of the end of you the kind of you you know all that billboard i don't know if everybody heard about the billboard and well no that. tell our viewers because some of them don't Not, know. well meach was in atlanta and terry was in cal we were in california and in atlanta you know they had put up this big billboard you know like you'd like you teasing the feds now. The billboard said, BMF, the world is ours. Wow. You know, and I, coming from such a private life, you know, didn't understand. Like, I kept saying, y'all going to get, get me indicted. Mm -hmm. Years and years, like, coming up into the indictment, y'all going to get me indicted. Y'all going to get me indicted. Y'all going to get me indicted. Sure and I'm already, we are already at odds anyway. You know, I had even left and came back. Because my kids were still in school, and I left them there, but I had left. And sure enough, I'm indicted. I knew it. I said, after all the years that I had been in Did the Did you street, know it was coming, or like, what was the date like when you found out that you was indicted? I can, I, you know it was coming. You could feel it. You know, you're hoping and you're praying, like, oh, I hope I get past this because one. Because it was private, and then all of a sudden people start boasting. And yeah. And saying, now yeah. you're going to see and people popping bottles, spending a yeah. million yeah. in the things. strip club, yeah. throwing yeah. it up. Okay. I never, I just never heard of that because right. I'm in the streets. I'm, I don't feel like throwing my money away because we're taking serious chances. Mm -hmm. And they just was just doing so much, doing so much. And I'm like, oh, shit. This, I'm sorry, guys. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to prison. Mm -hmm. I just knew and I kept trying to think, like, how can I secure my kids? What's going to happen to them? You get scared. You know, uh, my days was barely sleeping. Because you feel the energy. Mm -hmm. I feel the energy. I felt that same energy before. Yeah, it's down. something you feel it. It's so like now a, you finally get the knock on the door and what happens? The most dreaded knock. <laughs> like mm. a day of my life. It's like I'm, 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 my younger sons were downstairs and I'm yelling like, oh my God, the police, you know. And only as a mother, you don't even, you know, I'm not thinking about myself anymore. Now I'm realizing what I did to my children, mm -hmm. what I did to my sons. You know, like, they get, they seeing this for the second time. Because remember, my ex, my ex-husband. Got caught up the first time. The first time. Wow. And me, like, tr I'm supposed to protect these little people. Mm -hmm. These and now, young people. they're in danger. Yeah. So the feds come in, they knock on the door. So do they find anything or what? No. See, I never had anything at my house. I didn't play to have the mm -hmm. guns at my house. Anything around my fam, my, my sons, I didn't want that around it. I didn't want it around me. Once I decided, okay, you're going to do this, I'm not. I'm okay. out of it. I so don't, your house I don't, was clean. Mm -hmm. So what did they get? So it was hearsay or conspiracy or what, what did they Well, get? at first they charged me with, cons uh, with the conspiracy okay. to distribute uh so many kilos of cocaine. Okay. That they charged me with that and money laundering. Mm -hmm. But I had the best lawyer ever. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, you're going to prison. <laughs> she said, but I'm going to get you the best deal I can get. And as they were trying to, some of the um, people that were snitching, trying to say, oh, yeah, she, I got drugs from her, this, you know, things like that. And the proven with the motions going back and forth, the court found out that all of 
that was what lies, and they threw that out. Because one thing about me, I never wanted to deal with anybody they, they were dealing with. Mm -hmm. I always thought they were young and, like, idiots, yeah. you know? And that's probably why a lot of the heat came on me or, the, you know, the tension, like, we don't like her and stuff like that. Because I'm a much older woman. I shouldn't even been playing in the playing field with these kids mm. to me. You know what I mean? And so I But did they get your son at that time, or...? They didn't get my son. They didn't get my son until a year later. Because wow. what happened was when they didn't take the plea deal, the um, the prosecutor said, if y'all don't take the plea deal, we're going to supersede the indictment. And when they superseded the indictment, they came and got my son. They came and got my three nephews and my cousin. Wow. So you had how many, yourself and how many family members get caught up in that? five of us. Five. Now that. That was a the most hurting feeling that a woman could as a felt. woman as a mother as a mother Woo. because now i'm i'm looking at these people and i'm carrying so much guilt mm -hmm. so much guilt I because didn't they ultimately entered your life they came into my life when i went into that hole i brought my whole family into that hole mm. my family so out of that whole indictment the bulk of that that and and everybody, most people went by themselves. Mm -hmm. Or you got the two brothers, but I took my whole family, wow. and they all were young. Mm -hmm. They were all my son was when he got first and got died. I think he was twenty one, twenty two, wow. and he was sentenced to eleven years. Jesus, my nephew eight, ten, Jesus. my cousin thirteen. So when I walked that yard and I'm in that indictment, you know, now I'm feeling it like the most. I can't, I can't even tell you mm. the regret, the hurt and pain that I was suffering. I was out of my mind. Mm. I literally went out of my mind. I was drinking every day, drugging every day just to be numb, just to not to feel that. Mm. I know that feeling. I know the feeling of, for me, the most heart hurtful part of my incarceration was the impact it had on my children, mm -hmm. not being there, you know, and mm -hmm. so forth and so on. I know how it was hard for me to forgive myself. And so now you've got to go through the steps of self forgiveness. You got to be able to really, 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 mm -hmm. you know, to heal, forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. And now I can only imagine your kids going to prison for something that you know you kind of brought, brought them, them into. into. Yeah, what I made it seem to me. I made it seem easy because you've got to think this. I was this lady from from a young girl, nineteen years old, and never got caught up. You know, uh, so they watching you. They watching me. They so, want to be like you. Yeah. It was easy. I figured if I was a doctor, a lawyer, accountant, my sons would have been that. That's right. That's right. You know, but they picked up the lifestyle that I picked. You know that I. So was how in. did you ultimately heal from that resentment? I didn't heal until prison. Okay. And I, when I was when I, when I first entered prison, I was so angry, mm. so angry. And you so ended up getting sentenced to how much time? Which is fifty-seven time? months. Okay. So that's yeah. Five I did. Years. I was like. <laughs> I know I'm going, but could you please not give me more than ten? Mm -hmm. <laughs> could you? I can't do more than ten. But he, it was. I was sentenced to fifty-seven months. I pleaded to seven. The judge went under he, because he said that. Um, well, I don't know. I can't remember the law. The burning bed, like you know, I was in abuse. He felt like you know you was in this abusive relationship from a young girl. Mm -hmm. You couldn't possibly be really had thinking. So they gave me a couple of points off, but that brought it down to fifty-seven months. Okay. So I entered prison, and that walk through prison, I was bitter, 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 and I met a counselor who just talked to me. I, I, let me tell you this story. I went to prison. Everybody told me I was going to work. You know, you have to work in federal mm -hmm. prison. Mm -hmm. They told me I was going to have to work in a warehouse, and I, I dreaded that. I'm like, me working in a warehouse? I Baby, don't know shit about that. I'm telling the story between the <laughs> house like, Negroes and the field Negroes yeah. in prison, right? Mm -hmm. The ones that's in the field, baby, they, you got to do that hard labor. It yeah. gets real, real. It's real, real. But I went I went up to, you know how you got to go to guy, the counselor uh -huh. to give you a job. So he told me I was gone. He gave me the news. You're going to work in a um, warehouse. I got up. I was, I touched the door now. I got up feeling more sorry, more sorry than I ever feel. I'm, it's just, it's just raining. Mm -hmm. Pity, pity, just a pit. Of, I'm so in pity. So I grabbed the door, and he said, "Miss Welch," and I turned around. He said, "You gonna work in a chapel?" Wow. Mm -hmm. 
That was God. So that's the how. That's the, then we go back to that house nigga. So she got to stay in the house while the others was out in the field. But only thing it is like that is I was going to church, doing my ties, doing extra ties, thinking because I'm in the street, I'm gonna get us all the money to the church, make sure everybody, the kids, the homeless people are fed, thinking that I'm you know making my wrongs right. Mm -hmm. But when I and I'm in church, I'm sharp. I'm every week. I'm just designing Gucci down. I'm I'm walking. <laughs> Then I'm in church, but didn't know nothing until I went to prison. Didn't know, I mean, the whole story of Job, God, the Bible, all that. I didn't even know. It was so many different religions. I'm in prison. I'm in, I'm in prison in the West Coast. Not many black girls. I get this. Um, what prison was you in, sir? Um, Victorville. Okay, okay. And so you know that was kind of rough. Mm -hmm. It wasn't no camp to me. I'm like, I think because we surrounded mm -hmm. by the maximum mm -hmm. um, men's prison. But I was the only one out of almost 700 women that worked in the chapel. Mm -hmm. And for him to give me that chapel job, I knew that was God telling me, while you here, I'm going to work on you. That's good. Because I never, you know, out of everything, out of everybody on that camp, why he gave me that? That was God. You need to find me. Now you got to call on me. Mm. You ain't got nobody stripped of everything. You don't have your family around. The kids ain't around. You can't call your mama. You can't call nobody. You're going to have to sit here and call on me every day. Wow. And every day, talking to that counselor, reading that Bible, learning, trying to figure out who I was. Mm -hmm. How did I get here? It was always every day. We're going to find out how did you get here. What was wrong with you? What was so broken in you mm -hmm. that you ended here? You wasn't raised wow. like this. You can't talk to your sons. You can't talk to your, you know, I had nobody. So you I did had, the work. I That's when you actually got inside and mm -hmm. dealt with yourself. And, and dealt we talk with about that mm -hmm. through the journey you that inner work is so yeah. necessary. And that's when it was. And I said that was the best. Even though you dread going in prison, mm -hmm. it was the best experience for me. Oh, one of the things I keep hearing you say is uh, in this entire story, even through the abuse, you're not pointing the finger at anybody. Mm -mm. Your, your answers, you're constantly seeking the answers of yourself, mm -hmm. taking accountability um, for what is happening. And I, I think that shows like tremendous a yeah. tremendous level of strength. Uh, you mm -hmm. dope, sis. Yeah. You dope. Thank you. And it was mm -hmm. in during my incarceration that the work that we're doing now mm -hmm. started. Yeah. So I started working on my inner work, inner mm -hmm. healing. I started writing books for incarcerated yeah. women. Like that's where it happened mm -hmm. for me. And so I often say, say incarceration was my hospital. It was my. It was mm. my therapy. I I started journaling every day. Start talking to God every day, meditating every day. Just was not in the in crowd. Just had to work on me. Mm -hmm. I love you it. You know, just really had to dig deep. I kept, I was in the middle of the desert, too. Like, you know, when you read that Bible story, God put me in the middle of the desert because Victorville is in the desert. Mm. And I had to say, why here? Why in the desert? I could have been in any camp, mm. anywhere, any p women prison camp. Why did you put me in the middle of the desert? Mm -hmm. And that was the Include me. That's so I'm, I'm going to work on you. And I felt like he was working on me. I felt like I could feel him, his yeah. presence. On the street, I never felt what I felt in there. Wow. Mm -hmm. So now your time is up. Mm -hmm. You finish your time. You get with God. What happens when you come home? I just start doing the work again. It's like, I'm going to change me. I'm going to show people. I really dedicated and showing people and changing my life. I, I every my all my walks I gave I kept saying I I didn't know what my gift was you know growing up I didn't I knew I couldn't sing couldn't play an instrument what didn't want to go to college but my gift was to serve mm -hmm. to I went through that for somebody else to see that they can make it look I went through I used to always say why I'm going through all this but it had to be somebody and I thought that God knew that I could take it, that I can share my story, that I could help another woman. So that's why I just give back, give back, give back all the time. That's my therapy. The more I talk about, the more I give, I'm always helping somebody. And that gives me mm -hmm. my strength and my hope, you know. It gives me, it keeps me pushing. Like, I, you're never too old to do anything. You know, I look at, like, people at age shame. You know, but I'm like, no, I feel I good. I feel good. I feel youthful. I feel like I can still do anything. 
You doing it. You not you, it. you can do it. <laughs> Baby, you doing it. You yeah. a nominee. You yeah. know, you opening the businesses still. You're yeah. still a successful entrepreneur mm -hmm. doing so many things. You you infiltrated Hollywood mm -hmm. with your yeah. own film and production company. Yeah. I'm in awe of you Thank and you. in awe of how you came home and took charge of yes, your life and charge. you turned the negative into, into positive. positive. So mm -hmm. I commend you for that. Yeah. You know, now that I know your story, I, I just want you to share one last bit um, as we close out. It hurt my heart to see most recently mm -hmm. that was that your young youngest? My middle son. Your middle son passed away. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about that and how... You've been working yourself through the pain of that. I've been working just through, you know, like I said, my journaling, helping. Well, how I did you find out, first of all? Like, was that? my son? Yes. I, you know, it was, it was crazy. Like, the week before that, he said, Ma, I need to see you. So I was in Detroit, so I flew to L.A., and I spent the whole week with him. Didn't see the signs. Didn't see it at all. But he was just always, he was very clingy. But that's, I'm used to my middle son being that way. And he kept telling me, like, I want you to be this. I want you to take care of you. Don't worry about nobody else. Just take care of you. I said, okay. He said, no, I'm serious. We are all grown. Don't worry about nobody, the grandkids. You go take care of you. And I'm like, okay, I am. He said, I just want you to be happy. And I'm at his job. Everybody loves him at his job. We having a good time. He want me to spend a night, you know, stay over with him. I said, no, I got a hotel. You got your whole family. Mm -hmm. No, stay with us. We ate together. We laughed. You know, he, he always hold my hands and playing with my hands. He said, call me mommy. I did not see it. And then um, I we all, he promised that we will always talk every day. He said, I don't care what you're doing. Just text me. I'll text you. Just, you know. Call me. Let me just let me know what you're doing because I had moved away from LA, mm -hmm. and he said, "I just want to know that you're okay." And he said, "So every day, make a promise that you're gonna call me mm -hmm. or text me." I said, "Okay, we promise. We did all the promise, oh. the mm -hmm. hug, and everything." That was on. I left on Friday. Saturday we talked. Sunday I couldn't reach him. I was like, mm -mm, "That's not. We, we made this promise." Um. So on Monday. That's when it happened. Wow. Mm -hmm. So God knew, and he might have not prepared himself for that, but God knew to prepare us, you know, to give us that time and for him to you tell me that. that. that, that you need to, to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, his death was like, because you said he had a job, so was, was he in the street or how? No, my son took his life. Oh, he took his own life? Mm -hmm. He couldn't take it anymore. Couldn't take it. He couldn't take. Um, he couldn't take what people were doing to us. We were very bullied. But I kept myself strong. I'm like, don't worry about it. We can get through it. Never mind them. God gonna work it out. And they can say, you always saying God gonna work it out. But He is. People don't understand like bullying goes. It's just because you're an adult. You can get bullied. They kind of, like, they turned their back against them, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, don't mess with them. Don't okay, so them. you became blackballed. I became blackballed. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know why he felt. I don't understand. You know, he came from, he was, I guess he was sheltered. He always had something, and, you know, the pressure, like, he just he just didn't want to, he didn't understand. It. That's why I kept saying, you just take care of you now that I think about Don't worry about nobody. Just love So he him. was giving you that last message because he knew what he was going to do. Or he might have been headed to do it. He had, I don't know if he pre-planned it. I think, you know, when you talk to therapists or, you know, you know, the police and all that and different people, a lot of people think that people on the street that's mentally ill are the people that really commit suicide. It don't. Sometimes it just be something that happens, something snaps right then. Or it was a buildup and then that snap, mm -hmm. And they didn't want to talk to him, so... Got depressed about that. So you feel I'm feeling rejected. Wow. Some of the rejection. Yeah, so now I have to, it's just. You got to heal all over again. Yeah. So it's like you do the work, you get it together, you get through, you push through, and now another tragedy stri strikes, which causes you to almost feel guilty again inside. So now you got to go back through that process of self-forgiveness mm -hmm. and heal. And heal again. Well, sister, this journey isn't over. <laughs> no. We want you to take this journey with us. I'm so glad that you came. 
this story is far from over. I know we're going to see great things from, from yeah. you. And because he's my angel. And, yes. like, everything. Like, I just think just, you know, even how bad I feel about that, you know, the grief. But you could never imagine losing a child. But since then, so many amazing things have happened. And I feel like I'm, he's just there, like, see, I told you it was going to be all right. See, I, I, I do want to ask you uh, one thing, just – in, in this whole story, and there's so many layers, right? Mm -hmm. um, and even though you, you know, you've, you, there's a movie, and, and and you know, it's such a short amount of time to tell all of this story. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the great things about this platform is I, I would like you to, when you're doing these interviews, to, can you tell us something that, you know, maybe it's not told the right way or not said the right way, like. Um, like use this time to say that, or, or you like this this moment to say something that wasn't shown the best light, the best, you know. It, sometimes, like on TV, and you have these movies, it can be salacious, or it could be just again, it's like a short amount of time to tell this long story, and you know something that you would want us to know. Here. What in my movie, I think they touched on so much, even though when you're doing a biopic, you're really scared, mm -hmm. you know, you even don't want to watch it. But I think they really touched on what I wanted to touch on, mm -hmm. the cautionary tale and inspiring, you know, the, 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 you know, the, what you have to go through as a woman, you know, to become strong, you know, what you, the seeing, what the cautions in the street, don't be that person, mm -hmm. learn from me. So I think they got that. Well, when it I is, is not go. Go, right. And then when I watch the other story, it, it, it hurts my, you know, it makes me hurt because that's not what I want people to see. Even though people are entertained by it, it's not what who I was. Mm -hmm. I was, a, I think, in my, I was still was a caring person. I, I love my family. I always wanted to be around my family. I would never do the things I thought that they show in the story. Like when they show my abuse in my story, that's my story. That's something that happened before that. Nobody. Another woman, I can't tell you how to feel about your abuse. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm here. At least you could have talked to me about it. I don't want my kids. Now I sent them through so much. I have those two left. I don't have a par no parents left, nobody else left. But when they up in the sky, I don't want them thinking that your daughter or your mother was just out there running with this 17-year-old a high school student having sex in the back room or at work or anything like that. I still want them to think I was a strong, driven woman that wanted to protect them. I just didn't know how to protect them. But you know what the dope thing is? Your kids know because your voice is loud. Yeah. Your voice is loud and I was going to prove that to them, too. I said before I leave this earth, Y'all going to see a different woman. I'm going to build so many different legacies. You're not going to see me as that drug lady. You're going to see me as a powerful, business, strong woman. And that's the legacy I want to leave for my sons and my granddaughters. What a way <laughs> wow. to end this powerful. Was, was this something? <laughs> this was really something. <laughs> oh, man. I got so much from your story. I mm -hmm. see so much of myself in you. And I'm just so proud of you. We are definitely going to invite you to our community. So we have this online community, mm -hmm. and our sisters are there. Um, you are actually, and I, it's not planned, but you are the fourth woman that has sat in the seat mm -hmm. that's lost a child. Oh, wow. And what they all said is that one lady, she's created now through our voices, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a room in our community because she said people who lose kids need to talk to each other. Yeah. And that's what I just went home to Detroit. I went back to Detroit this weekend, and it was four mothers. We put on this comedy show. Wow, and that was wow. really great. The host, she had lost a seven year, uh, her seven year old daughter, and it was just about the tears, from the tears to the joy to the laughter. Mm -hmm. You know, it was and a that great was what the comedy show was. That was what the so I want y'all get your get them mm -hmm. yeah. because I know how it is for formerly incarcerated women. For me. When I talked to y'all, like that's how when that that's first like, night yeah. that we looked up, it was like, yo, we went on for we hours. We have a sing, like a uh, 
a secret language or Correct. something. And we we're able to talk about stuff about, that yeah. other folks don't understand. Yeah. And I feel like it's going to be the same way in that group. So mm-hmm. I can't wait to see y'all just like yeah. get together. I know that there's other support groups out there, but this particular one I want to definitely connect because yeah. there's folks from all yeah. over the country that are hurting. And yeah. any of y'all out there, if you've lost a child, if you have a friend that lost a child, Come get in our community. Let's talk about it. Let's heal together. Let's not just even talk about it. Let's figure out how we are going to make their names last forever. Yes. Like Miss Kimberly Hill, mm-hmm. she was here. She created a book about her son's life called Day Day Gains His Wings. Mm-hmm. And now that book is in schools across the country. And yes. she said that even in his death, it was like his purpose was greater in death than life. And that gives her purpose mm-hmm. and reason to go on. So I just can't wait to see what y'all do together, mm-hmm. how y'all heal together. So we thank you. And this is just such a powerful story. So many things that you've overcome. You're one of the strongest sisters I know. Oh, thank you, guys. Oh, we love you. Love you, too. Oh, Thanks for getting me through it. Let's get this. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Jamila T. Davis, and I got a special offer for you, right? It's my gift from me to you. You want to level up? You want to manifest the life of your dreams? Well, I'm going to give you a piece of the plan, right? It starts with my manifested now vision plan. So follow me. It's actually the template that I use each and every year to get into my goals, my dreams. And unlike a vision board, I actually put this document on paper with goals and dreams and plans of who I want to be and what I want to become. And now you could do it too. It's time to level up y'all. It's time to be the best you that you could possibly be. And I'm going to give you the plan. And best of all, I'm going to give it to you for free. Click the link right here. Download today and level up. Make sure you share the results with me. This is the exact plan that I've been doing for the last four years. And each and every year is taking me higher and higher. And I pray it does the same for you. Guys, you just watched another amazing episode of I Love Me More. And (laughs) Tanisa, from the time I met this little woman in Detroit a couple (laughs) months ago to knowing the story, you know, in my head, you're just a giant, just a giant in strength and a a, a giant in your resilience and your dedication to overcome all these obstacles. And literally, I just hope somebody out there is blessed by this. They see this and they're able to heal. They're able to turn their, whatever the situation is, turn it around and go in a different direction. And y'all... This was just an amazing episode. Please, t- we've invited you to come to our community, so please make sure you guys come to our community where you can also, you also see Tanisa, yes? Yes. Very good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. yes. www.blackwomens.com. Yes. And we will see you on the next episode. That's right. See you soon. Thank you, guys. I'm busy loving myself, putting me first. Now that I know I deserve more, I'm busy loving myself. Put me first Made up my mind